Welcome to my humble little office. My name is R. Keith Andrews. I am a spiritual guide and paranormal adept. The journey continues today on April 28, 2021 at approximately 2.14 p.m. PST. Well, today was a little different. Makes sense. Usually is. But, time to get on with things. And I have a list of stuff that I've got to get done tonight. One of the biggest ones is making sure that I've got everything set for tomorrow because, well, this month has gone by way faster than I was planning on. Probably way faster than you were planning on. Okay, so, first rule of thumb. Figure out what you're not content with. This fine little list I've got right now. I spent a lot of time adding things to it, and unfortunately, I think there's about 34 things on here. And right now, I've got, like, Two of them done. So, to say the least, today's been a bit of a write-off. However, much like you, the whole trick is it's, it's a, a question of just consistently get back at it. You know, if you stumble, get up and go. Remember, you're the only one that can be successful for you. No matter who tells you what to do or gives you guidance, if you don't get off the tail and actually do something... It's not going to work. Okay, you know, it would be nice to have to have somebody else be able to go, there, you're successful, but that ain't the way it works. And the reality is, the, the best way from, from what I've come to understand with all my clients over the years, is that if we work together, or more to the point, when we work together, we can actually change the little piece of the world around you and that will have the side effect of altering the world around other people. Together, therefore, we can actually turn this world into a much better world without the fighting, without the famine. And yes, I realize that sounds a little bit far-fetched. You know, people talk about it all the time. But the question you got to ask yourself is, have you been doing your part, as it were? Okay, yes, I putter around a lot while I'm doing this, but what the heck? Somebody has to. So, first rule of thumb, get an idea in your head of what you're not content with, and then start altering those items. Okay, because quite frankly, if you, alt if you remove everything in your life that you're not content with, all you've got left is what you're content with. This is not a bad thing in my eyes. Now, of course, that's just my personal opinion, but what the heck, it's the only one I've got. So... In order to get your life moving in the right direction, get that list together. And remember, and I did get that. The one thing I did do was get my calendar over there sorted around. You still can't see it because of the angle of things. But, and I'll have to figure something out there, I suspect. And yes, I realized to those, to those of you that have noticed that incredible glare in the back, I'm going to see what I can do about finding a way to block that off. I've got an idea which I'll put to work tonight and see if that works. Just something that I can do when I go to record because that window is not moving anywhere. But I might be able to do something to block out the, the glare. Because I sort of got to get started on that as well. But the important little factor is that when, you get, when you've got an idea in your head, you get focused on it. And the more focused you are, the more centered you are on what you're aiming for the easier it gets. But remember, where it comes to that list I was talking about, three things on the list, but you know, that's where you start. But keep the three things to 15 minute to half hour jobs. Okay, that way you can get them done and get on with the rest. Now with that in mind, considering the number of jobs here, um, let's see, I'm about to log into work. Within the within the next half hour, i got to log into work. As soon as I get done this, I work on the phone. So, as soon as I'm done this recording, I'll be logging into work. Now, that will give me seven hours. And if you think about it, you get four items, a, and four items an hour done, given 15 minutes to the item. I should pretty much get this whole list done by the end of the day. That's assuming I don't add anything extra to it, which is unlikely. I probably will. Remember, the only person that can be successful is you.
Okay. Nobody can be successful for you. Nobody can alter your paths for you or your habits. However, absolutely talk to the people around you that that you know have done something successfully. Okay, if you desire to do something successful, you know, successfully, that's the real trick is to say is pick, you know, talk to people that have done that came out well. Talk to people that have successfully done it before. Okay, they can show you how. Now, the obvious issue here is if you, I, if you figure that success means a million dollar bank account, talk to somebody that has become a millionaire. Okay, that is literally, literally a millionaire. Now, I'm talking about somebody that's worked their way up. Nothing against the people that have been born with with their parents or their ancestors doing a lot of work and getting the money. But if they're, if that's what's called old money as far as I recall. And the thing with that is, yeah, they're millionaires, but they aren't the ones that got there. It's the so-called new money, the people that have got there of their own, by their own push. Okay, those are the ones that know how to become a millionaire. Now, where it comes to breaking the pack rat rule. Well, I was a pack rat to the point of a staggering level. Now, the little blue drawers you see over my shoulder. That's how my whole house used to look, except for the fact it wasn't organized. Okay. So this idea of putting the tool, uh, putting the tasks on paper or on computer or in a vocal, a vocal reminder for those of you that cannot see. Okay, putting that list together. Okay, works out absolutely beautifully to break that cycle because then you get them checked off and away you go. Now, we're going to shift gears here for just half a second because there's a much more pressing problem in my eyes. And that is the spiritual guidance you've been getting from the people you've been turning to. The moment whoever you're turning to for spiritual guidance starts talking to you about fearing whatever it is, fearing whoever the spiritual guide at the top of the totem pole is, by whatever name, the moment your spiritual guide starts talking to you about fearing, about punishment for not succeeding, this sort of thing, they're leading you down a path that is going to be complicated for you. And I say this because of the over 80,000 clients I've personally dealt with over the years, both personal and business. Okay, you've got to look to people that encourage you to go after your dreams. And I don't, I, I hesitate to use the, ch the term chase your dreams because that indicates that you're still pushing or you're running after them. And not getting very far. Now, if you pitcher, put a ball in the water, okay, in like in a in a swimming pool, just a little plastic ball. Now, if you're trying to get that ball to come to rest against your stomach, okay, you got one of two choices. You can swim after it, or you can rush after it really fast, but the shock wave will push that ball away from you. Don't take my word for it. Test it yourself. Okay, you can try the same thing in a, in, a, in a bucket of water by moving your hand really quickly through the water to try and get to the ball. And you either have to pin that ball against the wall or slow your pace down a little so that it's steady forward motion and you will manage to get there. Okay, just take it one step at a time. Just looking for my eyeballs. Okay. Now, I think what I'm going to do here at this point is starting today, I'm, I'm talking about getting things moving in the right direction. So the, the reality of it for me is got to get focused. I'm not perfect by any means, but I am breaking a 57 and, and a whole pile years of bad habits. Okay, the fact that I've managed to get into the routine for the most part of getting of getting one video up and at least one video a day up is to me a real step in the right direction. Now I don't know if that's a good thing or not. I've gotten away from a few of the videos, which is why 
like I said, I've got to add things. But then what will happen here is what I don't get done today, I will end up finishing tomorrow. Because I'll just carry on. It will give me something to start with in the first thing in the morning. And apparently, there we are. I'm looking for a pen here and can't find one. Which gives you an idea of just how off kilter I am at this point. But, um, the, the reality of it, from my standpoint, is very simple. You know, and lists are great unless you don't get anything done. Okay, sometimes a list can get so big as to become cumbersome. Well, that sounded a little, little twist or a little confused. Needless to say, what I have to do is, and that's why I'm marking down here, um, is plan my video for tomorrow so that I start off at one point and it comes out real solid, real clear, step one, two, three, so we can cover it properly. I'm thinking that if I look at it and, and it's just an idea at this point, we'll know tomorrow when I get started. But I'm thinking if I run it so that I, so that I take an idea, run five minutes on that idea, I run these 30 anyway. You know, 30 minutes, roughly. So if I set them up at 5 minutes to a topic in improper sequence, um, what will happen is I actually manage to get it sorted out and have it come out a little more clearly and a little more effectively. I do want to say thank you very much for joining me in walking through this growth curve. I, you know, I shudder to think what this is going to look like a year and a half, two years down the road, because I'm not planning on ending this. I've got a very simple message to get out, to get out to everybody on the globe, whether they've got internet or not, and that's where you can come in. Okay, because the people that are, are getting this message, the message is simple. Working together, we can have a world without war, without famine, you know, without, without an overabundance of fear. Fear will be there anyway, it's the other half of love. But we can get by the war, we can get by the famine, okay, and we can certainly learn to cooperate. Kids are not born prejudiced, they are not born greedy. Okay, and every child, no matter what race, no matter what species, every child is the same way. They all desire respect in their own way. Okay, they all desire success. They all desire food in their stomach, a roof over their head. Together, we can make this happen, regardless of the spiritual background you're coming from or that you're currently in. And I'm not here to tell you don't follow whatever path. Okay, there's a lot of real good teachers out there. I'm not saying walk away from them. I mean, there are some that I question whether you should be following. Those specifically, in, 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 if you will, generalized terms, the people that, tend, that are telling you, fear your neighbor, fear the people around you. Okay, the material world is garbage. You know, you know, money is the root of all evil. All of these things are problematic. First and foremost, money is not evil in itself. Money is simply a barter point. And in my opinion, it's a lot easier to move a $5 bill around than it is to move a, move a cow or a sheep. Or even a, a, a chicken for that matter. So if you're following somebody, if you're following a leader or you're following a, a belief structure that says the material world is garbage, you don't need it, you know, give us all your material stuff, we'll take it away from you. Uh, okay. Granted, there are many things that are not necessary in the material world, but there's an old saying that goes, everything in moderation. Okay, like, for instance, to keep a roof over your head, you don't require a computer. Okay, unless you're working in an industry, unless your job itself relies on working on the computer, at which point you might want one. Okay, it may be necessary, you know, to have a computer if that's what your job is. But for the average person, a computer is a great tool, it's a great toy, it's a fabulous brand, you know, it's a fabulous distraction. 
but there's a lot of things that are not required. Okay. However, I'm not saying you shouldn't have them. It's like medical support. Okay. There are, there are religious beliefs that say medical treatment from qualified doctors are a bad thing. Don't do that. Okay. You know, God doesn't want you doing that. Well, if you think about it, God created everything. God also guided, if you follow that belief structure, God also fed and led the people to the discovery and to the implementation of these medical procedures. Now, if God, if God is going to let him, by, God by any name, God, Allah, Buddha, I don't care, whatever you want to call him, Gaia, Itha, don't matter. If they created everything, then they're the ones that led the, and the modern doctors to the information they've got. Now, why, if that way, if the, you were led in that direction, why would they, why would, why would you be led there if not to utilize those, in those abilities, you know, to get that assistance? Okay. And then, of course, we can go to the flip side of that and go, well, we were given, you know, we were given that. That's the evil that was created. And technically true. But think of it this way. If you don't take the assistance when it's available, okay, are you going to be able to still worship your God properly if you're dead because you didn't take the assistance that was offered? Now, a, co a couple of weeks back, I mentioned this one, per this, this one story about a young lass. You know, the whole community, little community, but there was a flood, and the water started rising, and everybody was was being put. You know, everybody was being evacuated, and this one this one particular young lass goes, "I'm not leaving my home because God will protect me." So the water starts getting high, and she refuses to leave. Well, this guy in a four by, right? He's got a high he's got a, a high rise vehicle on, and you know he's got a high rise lift kit on his truck. Comes to her yard and goes, come on, get in, I'll get you to high ground. No, 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 I'll be fine, I'll be fine, God will protect me. So the guy drives off. And then a little while later, a guy in a rowboat comes up, and because the water's now up over her deck. And she's moved into the, into the house. And the guy in the rowboat comes up and he goes, come on, get in, I'll, you know, we'll get you to high ground. No, no, that's okay, God will protect me. And then, so the guy goes off, and a little while later, kind of powerboat comes by, and goes, you know, come on, let's get you out of here. You know, pretty much everybody else is gone. We'll get you a lift to high ground. And she goes, no, no, God will, God will protect me. I'll be okay. So she ends up. The water keeps rising, and she climbs up on the roof of her car, on the roof of her of her house. And a chap in a helicopter comes in. Come on, ma'am. Onto the ladder, we'll fly you to, to safety. No, no, that's okay. You know, and that's okay. God will protect me. So I'm, I'm staying here. So the helicopter flies off. And, well, subsequently she drowns. So she ends up at the, at the pearly gates. And she goes, St. Peter, why didn't God protect me? And St. Peter looks at her and goes, um, laughs. You were warned, get out of the area. They and they sent you know, you were sent a boat. You were sent a power boat. You know, truck, boat, power boat. You were even sent a helicopter. What more did you want God to do for you? Okay. You were given all these options, all this help offered to you, and you turned it down. What more could God have done? Now, the reality is. Okay, there, there is a saying that goes hand in hand with that. God helps those that help themselves. Okay, and I've always made a qualifier to that. He wasn't referring to thieves. But when, when help is offered you, I mean, granted, some people, myself included, very stubborn. You really want to be independent. You know, and I mean, I personally desire to be independent. That desire led me into all kinds of, of hardships and what have you that looking back on it, I didn't have to go through. But because I was so stubborn and so stuck in my idea that 
I've got to do this myself or I'm not complete. That led me through decades of struggle. Not the best way to be. Okay, and I'm encouraging you at this point, and I will point this out to anybody that has the ability to help others, anybody that is in a position to guide other people. The, and the challenge here, or the real responsibility in my opinion, is if you've got that ability, if you've got that gift of being able to teach people how to motivate, you know, how to mobilize their own life, it's up to you, regardless of what walk of life you're from, regardless of your income bracket, your social standing, doesn't matter. Okay, it's up to you to help the people that don't have the ability to see that for whatever reason. Now, I differentiate things where it comes to ignorance. Now, we know about ignorance being and people being rude or be, people being ignorant. But what I consider true ignorance is that for whatever reason, you didn't get the message. You didn't, you don't know how to do something. Okay. For instance, if you don't know how to cook, it's true ignorance that you don't know how to cook. You haven't learned. Whether it's because you weren't paying attention, because you couldn't grasp the ideas that were presented to you, because the teacher taught you in a way that you couldn't figure it out, doesn't matter. If you don't have the knowledge, that's called true ignorance. Stupidity is when you know better and you do it anyway. Okay. Now, there are such things as addictions that create problems. You may know better and find that you're not able to stop yourself from doing things, from, from going down a road. Gambling addicts and drug addicts, you know, gambling, drug, and alcoholics are all prime examples of people that have this problem. Same as overeaters, you may not be able to just automatically stop yourself. This is why there are other groups out there, for instance, you know, Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous, okay, Gamblers Anonymous, there's a whole pile of them out there of people that have similar problems. Okay, Connect with these people, connect with these groups. They may be able to give you that little tool that you didn't have that may be able to turn your life. One thing's for certain, if you stay on the path you're on, you don't alter it, your life continues the way it has. Okay, and this is why I strongly encourage you to really take a look at things and go, am I content with the way my life is right this moment? Okay. Which is why this funny little list here, I intend, you'll notice I've only, I think, yeah, you can't see it anyway. But I've only got, I think, one thing on this list that's actually checked off. Now, of course, by the time I'm finished this video, at least one more will be checked off, which is the fact I wanted this video done for today. And I keep doing that. The term want, that's where my holdup is. Okay, if you look at my past videos, look up a, a subset called language. You'll find a few of the words covered. Now, there will be a total of, of 12 eventually. I've already identified nine, most of which I have in that subset. If you look up the, the subset language, you'll find a, a number of the words already covered, okay, that are actually self-deprivating. Self they are hindering you just by uttering them. You know, in a nutshell, when I utter the word want, it creates a, to the universe, what you're calling in is the energy of lack or the energy of want. So when I go, I want to do this, that's been my whole holdup is because I should be going, I desire to get this done or I choose to get this done, which brings in the same, the energy of completion. Okay, you can have something in your hand and desire to have it or choose to hold on to it. But if it's in your hand, it's not functional to want to have that in your hand because it's already there. So the lack is, is already out of the equation. But check out those back videos, okay? And, you know, give us a thumbs up on this one. My overall goal is to get these videos to go global. Whether that means bringing, the, bringing my subscription list up 
you know, into the millions or whether it means hundreds of thousands of people are reading, are watching these and turning around and spreading the message out to the rest of the people that they get in contact with. Because if we go with the idea of six degrees of separation, in other words, between you and any and anybody on the planet, you know somebody, they know somebody all the way down the road, so that between you and anybody, there is only four, well, there's six, in between you and six people, you are connected to everybody on the planet. With this in mind, if you meet a dog, okay, and you say hi to the dog, and you treat it decently, it will, and this one's going to be hard for you to, for, for me to prove, so I'm not going to bother. But you treat the dog nice, the dog will let other dogs in the area know that you treated them nice, and thereby that same six degrees of separation still applies. Everybody on this planet, whether no matter what your race, no matter what your species, we're all connected on a first world living place. This is our first world. Now, if you're one of those lucky few that have been off this planet or didn't come from here originally, this may be your personal second world or third world. Okay, there aren't many people like that that are here, but there are some. That's a video for another time. In the meantime, give us a, th a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, okay, share the daylight out of it, and let's get the message spread that together we can and will make this world a better world without the war, without the famine, okay, without a lot of the stress, but it's going to require working together, okay, and it is doable. It's a huge job, and none of us can do it on our own, okay, so I'm going to bring this to a close. At the bottom of the list, you'll find a list of different of uh, different books that I've written in five different genres. Uh, okay, actually, I got right. I got to add one, so in the next batch will have an extra book on them. But there's a list of different books that I have written that you can order only through me at this point. There's also a list of contact points where if you've got questions or or if you've got ideas. Drop me a line, let me know. I will do my best to respond to them. Okay, with that in mind, I'm going to let you go for the time being. So until we talk again, which will be tomorrow sometime, take care of yourselves and each other. And for pity's sakes, stay positive.